who is the the best heavyweight of all time in your your opinion? Right, that's a hard one, you know, because uh, it's eaters as well, isn't it? It's yeah, eaters yeah. as uh -huh. well. You know, you've got the, the the Dempseys and the Jack Johnsons, and and what what you've got to try and get into your head was people like Jack Johnson were 40, 45 round fights. You know, and you can't get that. And and there's a famous thing where he lost uh, to Jess Willard. 45 rounds. 45 rounds. Jesus. So he, he's boxing, he's defending his title. Of course, this, the, the white establishment in America hated the fact that he was there. Uh, not only because of the colour of his skin, but because he was an extravagant character who went with white women. Mm -hmm. So he was he was a gambler, he was a womanizer, he was a drinker, he was all the things that they hated. And he was black. And they hated that. So they looked forever and ever, for, for years, to find a white some, person that wouldn't beat him. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they looked yeah. for. So they found Jess Willard, six foot seven, a farmer from Texas, who only started boxing when he was twenty seven. So they fight, the fight goes on at Cuba, Havana, and it's blistering sun, and it's famous because it's a 45-round fight, and in round 26, um, Johnson is hit, and he goes down. Now, the pictures show he's lying on the ground, covering his face from the sun, shielding his face, and he's counted out. And afterwards, he said... I took a dive because of death threats, because they were looking for the great white hope, and they thought they'd found it. Well, they did uh, in Jess Willard, but he says, "I, you know, my life was threatened. If you win this contest, you're dead." Jess Willard's retort to that is, "Why did you wait to the twenty-sixth round? Take a dive." Yeah, two, round Why, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's fair enough. That's mm -hmm. a fair enough argument. But these are the great heavyweights. Jack Dempsey, my goodness. Gene Tunney, an artist, you know. But the guy I think who's over, overlooked in, in lots of these debates is Rocky Marciano. Marciano, five foot ten and a half, 13 and a half stone. Of course, you don't get heavyweights at that nah, weight. He would now. be a heavyweight now. No, he wouldn't no. be a heavyweight. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And he had the most... He, he, you know, he, he, you know, he didn't have a lot of skill, but his skill was knowing how to overcome his disadvantages, his height and reach, just like Mike Tyson, and how to overcome that and be a winner. And so uh, he's up there, in my view. Um, but what suppose, about Mike Tyson? Well, let me, yeah. Tyson. Yeah. But before that, let me pick probably my favourite as an artist, as a it's a brilliant I love puncher. that as an artist. That's, yeah. Yeah. Joe Lewis. Okay. Right. Now, Joe Lewis, this is the heavyweight division, not my greatest favourite uh, fighter of all time. Sugar mm -hmm. Ray Robinson is, mm -hmm. is that guy. And I trained with him. And Sh Sh um, Joe Lewis had this brilliant timing that he could knock a guy out with one punch. He was super duper when it came to one punch and it was all about the timing and it was all about the shortness of the punch. Uh, Tyson, Tyson's knows his disadvantages. He knows what he's got to do. Now he had to adopt the, the peekaboo style like Floyd Patterson before him, both coached by Customato. Mm -hmm. They were short for their weight. So they couldn't out jab their opponent. You know, a taller guy will always out jab you if he's if there's equal skill. He couldn't do that. He had to get close. He had to hook. Right, that was he couldn't jab. He had to get close enough to hook and find the chin. So he did that with head movement, and and uh, it, it was all about head movement, getting close because it different. You upset. You, you 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 upset and you antagonize an opponent, a taller opponent. If you if that target that he's trying to hit is moving and won't stay still and won't be hit. So if he keeps moving, it unnerves your opponent and then he gets himself into a position where he can hook over the top and the damage he did was phenomenal until those bigger guys were better opposition. So you win all these kind of knockout victories against big guys, then you get against the big guys who are actually good. Yeah. Right. And that's when, how do we cope with Tyson? 
well, we don't let him too close and we uppercut him, right? And and there was a lot of that going on in the heavyweight division when he when Tyson was there. Still a great champion.